Business intelligence is one of the most important technologies in the 2020s, but what exactly is business intelligence? That's what I'm gonna talk about here today. Eric Kimberly, I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And one of the technologies that we commonly help our clients plan for and implement is business intelligence. And business intelligence is a important technology that's massively important to organizations as they figure out how they're going to make better use of their data, how they're going to predict the future, how they're gonna understand how their business and operations are running today. So what I wanna to do today is talk about a little bit more detail about what exactly business intelligence is, how it works, and how it might apply to your organization. In order to understand why business intelligence, or BI, is so important to organizations today, it helps to look at the future and how we got to where we are today in the 2020s. If you go back to the 1980s, when organizations were really starting to first digitize and computerize their operations, there was a real focus on just capturing information. It wasn't as focused on efficiency gains or looking to the future or predictive analytics and all the stuff we've got today. It was more fundamentally focused on just capturing data and storing that data digitally within computer systems. So over the years, over the last several decades, organizations have been stockpiling data. They've largely been moving from system to system over the years and along the way they brought the data with them in many cases, and that's leaving organizations with a huge amount of data that they're sitting on today. Now, when we fast forward to today and the types of technologies and data that's being captured, that trend towards data collection and data capture is only growing exponentially. You have internet of things, you have sensors out on shop floors, you have data being captured in warehouses, you have e-commerce systems that are capturing information about your customers, and of course, you still have your back office, ERP systems and financial systems and other technologies like that. So in addition to having data that's been starting to be captured back in the 1980s, today you have technology that's capturing data at an even faster speed. And you also have cloud technologies. So cloud technologies are capturing data in ways that other on-premise systems hadn't been able to in the past. So organizations now are sitting on tons of information. They're capturing data every day that they need to make sense of. And this is internal data about their operations and their financials, their inventory levels. It's also external information about customers and even suppliers and information that they're capturing throughout the supply chain. You also have structured and unstructured data. So historically structured data would be quantitative, predictable data, whereas unstructured data are things like social media posts or social media interactions with your brand. That's an example of unstructured data that has value if you can make use of it. So the key to business intelligence is taking all this massive amount of data and figuring out how to make use of it, how to turn it from data into information that we can use as managers to make decisions to run our businesses better and to better service our customers. And the organizations that are best able to do that are the ones that effectively leverage business intelligence tools. And that's what we'll talk about here today. Now, the first and most fundamental use of business intelligence is in the area of financial consolidation. So when you look at organizations, especially multinationals or multi-site locations that are operating across a variety of industries or a variety of markets, they have a need to take all of their data, all their financial information, all the transactional information, roll it up and consolidate it to a set of financial results. And historically you had tools like enterprise performance management tools, EPM tools, or financial reporting tools. For example, Oracle is a vendor that's very well known for their business intelligence and their performance management financial consolidation capabilities. So you've had technologies for a while that have allowed organizations to consolidate this financial information, but at the most fundamental level, business intelligence looks at historic information, the fundamental financial performance of an organization. Now, if we build on this whole concept of financial consolidation and look more broadly at our entire operations, that brings us to the point of KPIs or key performance indicators and dashboards. And that's something that business intelligence tools are designed to do effectively. So what a dashboard is, is essentially it's a grouping or a screen that you would go to and look at of various KPIs or key performance indicators, metrics that are important to the organization. And these dashboards and the KPIs that fit within those dashboards 
might vary from department to department or location to location or even amongst individuals or different managers within an organization. They may have different dashboards, different data sets that they need to look at to understand their operations and also look to the future and make decisions about the future. So business intelligence tools start at the top of the organization. And when we look at financial consolidation, as we talked about a moment ago, that's sort of the highest top level business intelligence results you can get. What dashboards and KPIs do is look at providing meaning behind the numbers and providing more real-time quantitative data as it relates to operations, as it relates to inventory levels, as it relates to what your customers are doing, how they're interacting with your brand, how people are responding to your marketing messaging. Those are all examples of metrics that can be part of a dashboard, and those dashboards get rolled out or sort of cascade down throughout an organization. And the best business intelligence tools out there are the ones that provide you the flexibility to slice and dice and to manipulate data and to provide different KPIs and dashboards based on the needs of each individual or group within your organization. Another emerging and very popular aspect of business intelligence is predictive analytics. And what predictive analytics does is it takes the first two things we talked about, financial reporting and dashboards, takes it one step further and starts to look to the future. So rather than looking in the rear view mirror at what happened in the past or even just looking at what's happening right now, predictive analytics try to take that historic data and statistically quantify and predict what will happen in the future. So one common example of predictive analytics would be something that's actually been around for a while, which is demand forecasting. Looking at what customer demand is likely to do in the coming years, coming months, coming weeks, what the seasonality might look like, how macroeconomic trends might impact overall demand. So predictive analytics is a way to take all that data that organizations have accumulated, make sense of it, and look to the future to help predict what will likely happen in the future. So when you think about business intelligence, it's important to think of it not just as historic reporting, but also looking at the predictive analytics component of it to really harness the power of what the analytical tools can do to predict the future. Now, all the stuff we've talked about so far sounds great in theory, but the key to it is one missing link, which is data warehousing. And a data warehouse is essentially taking data from multiple sources and housing it in a central database that can then be used to provide inputs into a business intelligence tool to provide the reports, the dashboards, the predictive analytics, and all the things we've talked about so far. Now, the reason data warehouses are so important is because most organizations don't have just one system that houses all this data. Most organizations have multiple systems. They might have a core financial system that manages the finance and accounting. They might have another system that manages the warehouse, another system that tracks data and information on the shop floor. You're gonna have information coming from your e-commerce system, your customer orders, your billing system. All that stuff is capturing data, all these different systems, and they're capturing data in silos. And in order for business intelligence to do its job and to provide a complete end-to-end -end view of your entire operations, you need all that data from multiple systems to end up in one place. And that's what a data warehouse does, is it houses the data from multiple sources so that then the business intelligence tool can pull from that data warehouse to provide the reports, dashboards, and analytics that we've talked about here today. The good news with business intelligence is that it's grown so much over the years. There's such high demand for good business intelligence that there's a lot of different options you have to choose from. You certainly have your traditional enterprise resource planning systems, your CRM or HR types of systems. Different technologies that automate and, and business processes provide a limited amount of business intelligence. So if you're investing in any modern cloud-based technology, chances are pretty high that it has some level of business intelligence, analytics, reporting, et cetera. But the most powerful BI tools are the ones that are designed just to do business intelligence. So there's a whole category of technologies out there that are called business intelligence tools. Products like Microsoft Power BI. There's also Tableau, which is another very common system. There's actually a lot of different systems out there that provide capabilities like that, and that's just two examples. In fact, I've created a top 10 video that counts down the top 10 business intelligence tools. So I encourage you to check that out on my YouTube channel. But the key here is to really understand that you have a whole host of options. And just because you're implementing a certain type of technology, like a ERP system or a CRM system, for example, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to have the 
business intelligence tools and capabilities that you need. So business intelligence tools, the standalone business intelligence tools, are great for situations where you're investing in new technology and you want to add to the business intelligence capabilities. But even if you're not investing in a whole host of new technologies and you're working off legacy systems that are already in place, business intelligence is actually a great way to maximize and leverage the data that you're capturing in those older systems. In fact, we find that many organizations get more of an ROI from business intelligence tools than they do from investing in core back office systems like ERP systems or supply chain management systems. So the key here is to understand what your priorities are and know that when you're going through your digital strategy and planning, just understand what kind of tool is going to give you the business intelligence that you need and are looking for within your organization. Now, despite all the benefits of business intelligence that we've talked about here today, there are challenges to getting the most value out of business intelligence tools. For example, your business intelligence tools are only as good as your data sets. So if you have dirty data, the data is corrupt, it's inaccurate, your business intelligence tool is going to reflect that inaccuracy. You also have the challenge that organizations have massive amounts of data. So in addition to cleansing the data and making sure that the data is accurate, you also have to deal with the fact that you have a massive amount of data. Like I said before, most organizations are sitting on multiple systems that are housing a massive amount of data. Most organizations just don't know what to do with it. So the key to business intelligence working well is to know exactly where that data resides and how you're going to map it and bring it over to the data warehouse to support your business intelligence and reporting needs. And then finally, migrating the data. If you're implementing new technologies like ERP or supply chain management or CRM, you're going to have to migrate the data from your old system to these new systems and then figure out how that new data that's been brought over to your new systems is then going to fit in and interact with your business intelligence tools. So that's another challenge, is just migrating the data from legacy systems to either new back office systems and or a data warehouse that can support business intelligence. That can be a pretty time consuming and a very exhaustive effort. And then finally, but not least importantly, anytime you're deploying a new business intelligence tool, that entails somewhat of a cultural change. So that entails taking a step in the direction of becoming a more data driven organization with better visibility, using data to make future predictions and to plan for the future. And that just requires a mindset shift for a lot of your employees and a lot of the team members. So ensuring that you have the right organizational change and migration plan and strategy for your people side of the equation is very important when it comes to business intelligence. So I hope this has given you some good insights into understanding what business intelligence is. For more information on business intelligence, including how it fits into digital transformation, as well as independent ratings of the different business intelligence tools out there, I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report. This guide provides you all the best practices you need to make your project successful and it also provides additional background information and research to help you in your decision process. In addition to this report, I've also included links in the description field below of a number of other different resources that I think will help you in your journey as you continue on your digital transformation. So I hope you found this information useful. Hope you have a great day.